Hello and welcome to Esoteric Worldviews. I am James Ford Guerrero and uh, today we'll be looking at a video about anarchy. Traditionally, uh, anarchy is a lot different from the anarchy that we have in our minds modern times when you say the word. When you say the term anarchy nowadays, it tends to insinuate uh, just complete lack of any kind of rules of the road or organized authority in any way, shape, or form, in any type of organization. You tend to just think of anarchy as, you know, kind of Mad Max and the Thunderdome type uh, world where everybody for themselves and whatnot and um, the power is in the hands of who has the most resources like gasoline or water in this post-apocalyptic Mad Max type world that kind of comes to mind when we think of anarchy but really that kind of system is more like the fascist oligopoly that we have today a kind of free-for-all world where there's no organization per se but just people that have resources exploiting others so the type of crazed anarchy that they have you thinking that anarchy exists uh, is is more like the fascism that they promote as supposed order and freedom and democracy traditionally anarchy comes from the same era as the ethos of the people who founded America the same type of libertarian philosophies flourishing back then came from anarchists <clears throat> mostly in France and other, where, other places um, you know, France being one of the main uh, philosophical hubs of these great a anarchist and, and uh, anarcho-syndicalist and, and libertarian socialist philosophies mainly in part I would, I would go to say because France or that I would uh, venture to say because France was the host of many Masonic lodges in that period where these type of ideas which were counter to the dominant French aristocracy tied to the Catholic Church Right, where these these ideas were kind of being produced in these lodges. I was reading about it in a, in a book from that time. Anyway, so I think that these ideas came from then, and since then they've been completely twisted, but anyway, they began as strictly democratic ideals, forms of economic systems, where the people had complete control over their means of work and their conditions. Where the people actually controlled the workplace. There was no boss owning the work and exploiting workers, but the workers owned the businesses. Is this philosophy. Uh, Michael Moore has, has experimented with that a little bit in one of his documentaries I saw of a democratically owned business. This is the anarchist, libertarianist ideal, which is at the core of such, you know, Ron Paul's philosophy, which he's, uh, you know, championing, championing so much right now. This libertarian kind of push in America doesn't even understand the term. The term libertarian first was used by social libertarians, libertarian socialists, people who had in mind a vastly different system than we see today where people actually organize together from the ground up to control and develop into trade unions and power is organized in that way from the ground up so um, the only civilization really in history uh, to, to live up to this ideal well, there is the Spanish Civil War and the Paris Commune so I'm going to show you a clip right now from the Spanish Civil War of people living the libertarian socialist ideal Paradise. Catalonia was the anarchist stronghold. Here the revolution was more profound, more extreme. By the end of July, anarchists who had seized weapons to defeat the rising dominated the city of Barcelona. It was a moment anarchist militants like Josep Costa had been waiting for. Pro en aquells moments when se produeix el trencament, when la societat rebenta, 
At that moment, when society burst wide open, there was such tremendous enthusiasm among the working class, and this was channeled through the unions, the parties, everywhere. People participated with such enthusiasm, with such vitality, that it's very difficult to describe it now after so many years and to examine that situation coldly. But I do have to say that among ourselves, many of us said, now's the time to destroy all that has been oppressing us. The Catalan government ruled only in name. All structures of power collapsed. Churches and monasteries were burned and looted. Helpless, the Catalan government offered power to the anarchists. But, true to their principles, they refused it. The anarchists believed that out of this revolutionary explosion, the people would create their own free society, without state, church or capitalism. Federico Monsenier was a famous anarchist orator. Had we taken power because we were the majority, it would have meant betraying a pact of common struggle we had, in a way, sealed with the blood of so many of our men from many different sides. Communists, socialists, syndicalists, and above all, anarchists. It would have meant betraying that pact and doing in Catalonia what Lenin and Trotsky had done in the Soviet Union with the takeover of power by the Bolsheviks. We didn't do it and we have been criticized many times for it. With hindsight, who knows, perhaps, perhaps we should have done it. Some anarchists now feel that their refusal to take power was the beginning of their undoing. At that time, the anarchists had no doubt about their main objective to defeat fascism. But for them, the campaign was not just against the army rebels, but against capitalism itself. While the columns surged out to defeat the enemy, committees of workers in the town struggled to construct a new order out of the confusion. At that time, it seemed impossible to solve those initial difficulties. But looking back, people really showed a lot of common sense. Everything was improvised. You could call it a miracle, despite the religious meaning of the word. It was a miracle achieved by the ordinary people. As the chaos subsided, this new revolutionary society began to function. Much of the Catalan economy was now being run by the workers themselves. In Barcelona, trams and cinemas, factories, department stores and even greyhound tracks were run by their own employees. The trade unions sought to food supplies. Union lorries drove out to the villages with goods to exchange for food. Barter, not purchasing, kept Barcelona fed for the first weeks of the Civil War. In some places, money itself, seen by anarchists as inherently evil, was abolished. Shopping was done with vouchers, issued by local committees. What do these vouchers represent? Well, they had to represent hours of production, the hours spent by a carpenter building a piece of furniture, or the hours spent by a peasant harvesting, working on the fields. Everything was calculated in hours of production. The peasants liked it because it meant making them equal to the industrial workers, making all work equal. Vouchers bought bread at the bakers, but they now also bought lunch to the Barcelona Ritz, the big hotels have been turned into hospitals or into canteens serving cheap meals to militiamen and working class families, as this anarchist newsreel proclaimed. In sus grandes cocinas, 
Se prepara la comida para cuantos van al hotel a saciar su apetito. Los amplios comedores que antes ocupaban maquilladas y frívolas damiselas, grandes financieros, capitanes de industria, aristócratas ociosos y aventureros internacionales de toda la haya, ahora están abarrotados de hombres y mujeres humildes que siguen el ritmo de la sociedad que se está creando. Barcelona trabaja y come, esa es su fuerza y su virtud. Now that the factories and workplaces were in the hands of the workers, anarchist union leaders like Josep Costa fought to start production again. We tell the workers to get back to the factory and wait for our instructions. Immediately we called all the factory owners and executives to a meeting at the town hall. We tell them, well, gentlemen, something big has happened here. We don't know what's going to happen, but the factories have to continue functioning. We ask you to be at work again tomorrow at whatever hour you're supposed to start, five o'clock or eight o'clock. Agreed? Agreed. But we have to warn you, labor relations will be very different from now on. The CNT, the anarchist trade union, had been taken by surprise when the revolution began. It was anarchist militants who rallied the workers to take over their industries. Where the old bosses remained, they had to take orders from these workers' committees. Nearly 2,000 enterprises were collectivized in Catalonia, the greatest experiment in workers' self-management Western Europe has ever seen. The workers now set about improving their working conditions. Free medical care and adequate pensions were introduced. But at the same time, some of the old employers were hounded as enemies of the people. The chief difference between this and like socialism is that socialism powers some to act on behalf of the people. Whereas the libertarian anarchists or socialists say that the power has to be decentralized completely and fused throughout the whole people so that a person is able to interact with all of the members of society in such a way that greatly that, that is the highest for him to be able to interact with all of them and be able to accomplish his, his power inside of whatever that he is striving to carry out in his creative imagination. He will be fettered and led by all of the upper class people from above and getting the society into poor and wealthy. But rather, anything that you need to accomplish, anything that you desire, can be accomplished. There's no class and subordination to our masters who control our, our lives through the <clears throat> no to work for the sake of fear that you will die if you don't but rather you something which you enjoy, which you're good, which you desire to. Like for me, I love to, I love to count people. I love to, you know, take people. Kind of, so I would do my heart, provide my service, and in exchange I get these vouchers, and whatever I need to go, turn these work that I require, the I require. 
and completes the whole thinking system and enables me to get anything that I want. There's no, there's no for luxury items. And luxury skyrocket prices. Everything available to everyone. Dynamic of society. Everything is adjusted to everything else instead of everything just being oppressed and, and held down. You see the enthusiasm and the the people spoke about their society. They were participating in their world. about the prospects of where things are. There's no poverty, no joblessness, nothing. Because there's the incentive of people to each other taken away. And it becomes to provide love out of the desire to provide, the desire to be a part of the society, out of the desire to give your life.